widespread apprehension about the future. The present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living. Rulers and statesmen, men who occupy positions of trust and authority, thinking men and women of all classes, have their attention fixed upon the events taking place about us. They are watching the relations that exist among the nations. They observe the intensity that is taking possession of every earthly element, and they recognize that something great and decisive is about to take place, that the world is on the verge of a stupendous crisis, the calamities by land and sea, the unsettled state of society, the alarms of war, are portentous. They forecast approaching events of the greatest magnitude. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. They are strengthening for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world, and the final movements will be rapid ones. Troublous times soon to come. The time of trouble, which is to increase until the end, is very near at hand. We have no time to lose. The world is stirred with the spirit of war. The prophecies of the 11th of Daniel have almost reached their final fulfillment. The time of trouble, trouble such as was not, since there was a nation, Daniel 12 verse 1, is right upon us, and we are like the sleeping virgins. We are to awake and ask the Lord Jesus to place underneath us His everlasting arms, and carry us through the time of trial before us. The world is becoming more and more lawless. Soon, great trouble will arise among the nations, trouble that will not cease until Jesus comes. We are on the very verge of the time of trouble, and perplexities that are scarcely dreamed of are before us. We are standing on the threshold of the crisis of the ages. In quick succession, the judgments of God will follow one another, fire, and flood, and earthquake, with war and bloodshed, there are stormy times before us, but let us not utter one word of unbelief or discouragement. God has always warned of coming judgments. Those who had faith in His message for their time, and who acted out their faith to His commandments, escaped the judgments that fell upon the disobedient and unbelieving. The word came to Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me. Noah obeyed and was saved. The message came to Lot, up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. Genesis 19 verse 14. Lot placed himself under the guardianship of the heavenly messengers and was saved. So Christ's disciples were given warning of the destruction of Jerusalem. Those who watched for the sign of the coming ruin, and fled from the city, escaped the destruction. So now we are given warning of Christ's second coming, and of the destruction to fall upon the world. Those who heed the warning will be saved. God has told us what to expect in our day. Before His crucifixion, the Savior explained to His disciples that He was to be put to death and to rise again from the tomb, and angels were present to impress His words on minds and hearts. Mark 8 verses 31 and 32. And He began to teach them, that the Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected of the elders, and of the chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And He spake that saying openly. And Peter took him, and began to rebuke him. Mark 9 verse 31. For he taught his disciples, and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. Mark 10 verses 32-34. And they were in the way going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went before them, and they were amazed, and as they followed, they were afraid. And he took again the twelve, and began to tell them what things should happen unto him, saying, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests, and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles. And they shall mock him, and shall scourge him, and shall spit upon him, and shall kill him, and the third day he shall rise again. But the disciples were looking for temporal deliverance from the Roman yoke, and they could not tolerate the thought that, he in whom all their hopes centered, should suffer an ignominious death. The words which they needed to remember, were banished from their minds, and when the time of trial came, it found them unprepared. The death of Jesus has fully destroyed their hopes, as if He had not forewarned them. So in the prophecies, the future is open before us, as plainly as it was open to the disciples by the words of Christ. The events connected with the close of probation and the work of preparation for the time of trouble, are clearly presented. But multitudes have no more understanding of these important truths, than if they had never been revealed. Last day prophecies demand our attention. Revelation 14 verses 9 to 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Said my accompanying angel, 
Fearful is his work. Awful is his mission. He is the angel that is to select the wheat from the tares and seal, or bind, the wheat for the heavenly garner. These things engross the whole mind, the whole attention. We shall have to stand before magistrates to answer for our allegiance to the law of God, to make known the reasons of our faith. And the youth should understand these, they should know the things that will come to pass before the closing up of the world's history. These things concern our eternal welfare, we should give more attention to them. We should study the great waymarks that point out the times in which we are living. Those who place themselves under God's control, to be led and guided by Him, will catch the steady tread of the events ordained by Him to take place. We are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy, to study the workings of providence in the great reformatory movements, and to understand the progress of events and the marshalling of the nations for the final conflict of the great controversy. Study the books of Daniel and Revelation especially. There is need of a much closer study of the Word of God, especially should Daniel and the Revelation have attention as never before. The light that Daniel received from God was given especially for these last days. Let us read and study the twelfth chapter of Daniel. It is a warning that we shall all need to understand before the time of the end. The last book of the New Testament scriptures is full of truth that we need to understand. The unfulfilled predictions of the book of Revelation are soon to be fulfilled. This prophecy is now to be studied with diligence by the people of God and should be clearly understood. It does not conceal the truth, it clearly forewarns, telling us what will be in the future. The solemn messages that have been given in their order in the Revelation are to occupy the first place in the minds of God's people. The subject should be kept before the people. There are many who do not understand the prophecies relating to these days and they must be enlightened. It is the duty of both watchmen and laymen to give the trumpet a certain sound. Let the watchmen now lift up their voice and give the message which is present truth for this time. Let us show the people where we are in prophetic history. There is a day that God hath appointed for the close of this world's history. Matthew 24 verse 14. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Prophecy is fast fulfilling. More, much more, should be said about these tremendously important subjects. The day is at hand when the destiny of souls will be fixed forever. Great pains should be taken to keep this subject before the people. The solemn fact is to be kept not only before the people of the world, but before our own churches also, that the day of the Lord will come suddenly, unexpectedly. The fearful warning of the prophecy is addressed to every soul. Let no one feel that he is secure from the danger of being surprised. Let no one's interpretation of prophecy rob you of the conviction of the knowledge of events which show that this great event is near at hand. The mark of the beast is exactly what it has been proclaimed to be. Not all in regard to this matter is yet understood, nor will it be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. Many will look away from present duties, present comfort and blessings, and be borrowing trouble in regard to the future crisis. This will be making a time of trouble beforehand, and we will receive no grace for any such anticipated troubles. There is a time of trouble coming to the people of God, but we are not to keep that constantly before the people and rein them up to have a time of trouble beforehand. There is to be a shaking among God's people, but this is not the present truth to carry to the churches.